All right. Uh, Rene Richards uh, is considered to be a relatively very good tennis player in the 1970s. Uh, at the age of 40, she uh, was able to completely dominate people around half her age. Uh, one might speculate, how is this possible? A 40-year-old uh, completely destroying people half her half their age. Um, one, some, some people might assume that she took some performance enhancing drugs, such as uh, steroids. Uh, however, this is not the case. Uh, in, in fact, Renee Richards was actually born a man, and um, this brings me back to my um, this brings me to my um, point, which is why transgendered athletes should not compete against non-transgender athletes. Now, before I start, I just want to say this isn't a um, discussion about morals or ethics because personally I have no issue with transgendered individuals. If someone is uh, transgendered, personally I have no problem with that. They could be transgendered all they want. This is a matter of fairness and safety for competitors that are going against them. So today I'm going to be saying why transgender athletes are not complete against non-transgendered athletes by providing why it's, fit, why it's fair, safety, and hopefully possibly some solutions into the future. So let's start off with fairness. Uh, I feel like I, um, it is quite evident that uh, males are biologically, uh, physically stronger, fa bigger, faster, stronger than females. I feel like we've all learned this in elementary school, middle school, or some point in our lives. I feel like this is all common knowledge. Uh, according to Neil Burton, who has an MD and is, and is a certified doctor, he states in the article, the battle of the sexes, men versus women, no clear winner. He stated that men are physically stronger than women who have, on average, less total muscle mass, both in absolute terms and relative to total body mass. The greater, the greater muscle mass of, of men is the result of testosterone-induced muscular hypertrophy. Men also have denser, stronger bones, tendons, and ligaments. Uh, he also stated in the article, uh, later in the article, he said, men have greater cardiovascular reserve with larger hearts, greater lung volume per body mass, a higher red uh, blood cell and blood cell counts, and higher um, <coughs> hemoglobin. Uh, they also have higher circulating clotting factors, which leads to a faster healing of wounds. Clearly, all of, everything that he stated uh, play, have a big impact when competing in sports. If you are bigger, faster, stronger than your competition, clearly you have a, you're at an advantage, even if you don't have much experience in comparison to them. For example, if a seven foot four, uh, 250 pound, four percent body fat man were to go against against a bunch of five ten um, middle schoolers who play in football, <coughs> this man has never played football. He would completely destroy the competition due to his uh, physical appearance. Um, in fact, there's also players who who believe that uh, this isn't right. Uh, for example, according to Fox Sports, Ronda Rousey, who is arguably one of the best MMA fighters in all of the UFC, female MMA fighters in all of the UFC, she said briefly in an interview about discussing a transgender MMA fighter by the name of Fallon Fox. Uh, she said, and I quote, in Fallon Fox's case, I think she is she has an unfair advantage. It's outside her control, but unfortunately, her scenario, it's unfortunate, especially for her competition as well. She's basically implying that uh, Fallon Fox, due to her, her previous being, being a man, and transitioning to a female has uh, an unfair advantage into a to a competition, which leads me to our next point: safety. Um, uh, again, to according to Fox Sports, Tamika Bretz, a female MMA fighter who happened to go against Fallon Fox, said, and I quote: "I fought a lot of women and have never felt the strength that I felt uh, in a fight as I did that night. I can't answer whether it's because she was born a man or not because I'm not a doctor. I can only say I've never felt so overpowered in my life." in my entire life, and I am abnormally strong woman in my own right. Uh, Tamika Fox is um, an outlier. She's relatively stronger, as she admitted. However, even uh, going against someone who used to be a man completely overpowered her, which uh, leads me to safety. Tamika Fox has been conditioned to go against um, female fighters uh, throughout her career. So now she's going against someone by the name of Fallon Fox. Uh, maybe she just isn't ready for this hit. Um, since Fallon Fox hits stronger than anyone she has ever hit. Has it gotten hit? Uh, a hit to the head could not only cause concussion, but even death, since she she is not physically ready to take a hit, such as Fallon Fox could um, do. This brings me back to my this brings me to my third reason, a possible solution. Uh, personally, I don't think there is a solution, since. In a perfect world, I would say just create an all transgender league, which, frankly, I don't think that's possible since we live in a world where 
would, people would uh, get mad over alienating um, groups and categorizing them into a certain category. Also, how many transgendered athletes do you think there are in this world? Not very many. So, so that's the only solution I can think of as of right now. Frankly, I don't think there is a solution. Hopefully in the future there could be a solution, but as of right now, I really don't think there is one. Um, it really does shame me, because, no, not shame me, I, uh, sadden me, saddens me because you have one side where these individuals who um, want to be tra uh, transgendered, they, they also want to compete against others. And you have this other side that believe it isn't fair and it isn't safe. So, both, excuse me. So, in conclusion, uh, transgender athletes and non-transgender athletes should not compete against one another. Some because it isn't fair, it isn't safe, and sadly there isn't a solution to this problem. And I really hope there is. So for all the Fallon Foxes and all the Renee Richards, I really wish there was a solution to this problem, but there sadly is. Thank you. All right, Ray, what did you think? So I thought it was pretty good speech overall, little things such as if you're moving um, quite a lot back and forth. Um, just you might want to work on your anxiety a little, yeah. Um, you had a really nice preview in the very beginning. Um, your main, what your speech was about was pretty clear, um, which was uh, why it's unfair for transgenders to be competing against women. Um, you had your three sources, which were Neil Burton, um, Fox Sports for Ronda Rousey, and then Tamika Fox uh, for safety, um, unfair advantages, and because men are physically stronger, which were very good points. Um, so basically, you, you're just, your entire speech was pretty clear. I thought it was pretty good. All right. Well, I'm going to echo most of what you said. I think you're right. I thought there was a good preview. And uh, at the end, there's a nice summary of those same points. Uh, I like the attention device that you have. It works well to kind of introduce the subject. And you've got information at the beginning of the speech that tries to you know, put a qualifier on your claim, suggesting that you're not saying that uh, these people don't necessarily have a right to uh, participate uh, or that you have something against them but the notion is that they present uh, a unique problem to the idea of competition in sports especially from the areas of fairness and safety which are the two points that you develop in the speech pretty effectively I thought you had good information on those two issues I like the example of Tamika Fox as an illustration there you had the quote from Ronda Rousey which was nice but Tamika Fox talking about a first-hand experience I think uh, adds some impact to that particular argument and makes it sound like there is uh, a lot more substance there. Plus, uh, the quote from the doctors earlier were, were fine as well. Uh, generally, the development of your argument is pretty sound. I think you could probably use a little bit more information here and there, but it's not like you had no argument there or just were making things up. There was definitely some substance to your argument. Uh, I think there's a question about you know what constitutes fairness that is a little problematic and maybe a little bit more time could be spent on that. At the end of the speech, you basically say there's no solution in this. In it. So from uh, the point of view of developing a solution, you have none except to suggest that these people shouldn't be allowed to participate in those particular categories where they represent a danger or violate some standard of fairness. Now, how, what we do to figure that problem out, that, like you said, is kind of past the purview of what your speech is. And uh, I think uh, you kind of suggested that at the beginning that you, you know, 
you don't want to treat people unfairly, but you do want to focus on those two issues of what's fair and what is uh, safe. And I think you did okay at that. Uh, presentation issues. If I'm listening to you, I, you sound so much better than you've sounded in other speeches. You sound more engaged and you're uh, a little bit more confident and you, you're animated when you're speaking to us. It's not just reading and it's not just going through the motions. You sound like you want us to share your point of view on this. So I thought that looked or sounded very good. Visually, like uh, from the waist up, same sort of thing. I think you seem engaged with your hands and your facial expressions. You look at us pretty regularly, even though you have a few notes in your hand that you're not really overly dependent on them. But I think Ray pointed out the one thing that uh, you'll notice a lot when you watch a video. You've got the dancing feet still. And so that's where all of your anxiety is coming out. And you're going to do something to kind of work on that. It's, I don't know, some deeper breaths, you know, uh, pace yourself a little bit more. Maybe uh, focus when you practice on timing out things and making movements that are really deliberate. In other words, like we talked about walking the transitions instead of kind of just going with the punches like you're a fighter and moving around while you're speaking. You know, plant yourself in a particular spot, anticipate the spot when you're going to deliberately move and then make that move and maybe a little let a little energy out there when you're doing that. You know, it's one of those things, practice helps, and the more you do it, you should always, I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm glad I've got that class out of the way and I don't have to do that again, but you don't want to give up those skills. You don't want them to atrophy. It's like anything. If you take Spanish for three years and you go, oh, I got that requirement out of the way, but you never speak Spanish after that, it won't take long before you can't speak Spanish again. So you want to take advantage of those opportunities when you can. All right, thank you.